Alright guys, we're going to get going with the next speaker a little bit early. Not too terribly early, but a little bit early, and then that is going to give us extra time for the dinner break where you all can continue your conversations and get ready to be entertained. Yes, we, we took this from her house. Also, we have a Christian flyer in the music in the house for about five years. I'm describes what they are. It's got a lot of words on it, but it's actually a really good description. Alright, I don't know why, but I mean, I don't have any other options. Awesome! He goes out on the street on a regular basis and talks to everyday people about Flat Earth, letting them know about the deception and he's got a great way of talking to people and a lot of people have a lot of respect for him including myself. So please welcome Joshua Swift of Authentic Intent. Give him a hand. It's uh, really an honor and a privilege to be here and to have been invited by Karen B and just Jack. Um, it's absolutely beautiful weather here as compared to Minneapolis where it's about like 45 degrees and cloudy. Um, so activism at this moment, even though the university is uh, a really hot place to be, um, it's really difficult to draw people into a conversation when it's, you know, almost sub-zero temperatures. So I'm trying to get in as much as I can with Flat Earth before the winter creeps up on us up there and then we just, it's all downhill from there. So I really can't thank you enough for this opportunity to share my experiences and I hope that you learn uh, what to do and what not to do. And, you know, just kind of be yourself. I think that's the most important um, way that we can communicate this message is to just be honest with yourself about what you've experienced and sharing it with other people. And I have taken the reins, I guess, if you will, of how to share this information with complete strangers. Um, I'm kind of batting 0 for 12 with my own family and my own personal friends. So. I just was like, well, if I can't do it that way, then I'll talk to strangers out in public. And it seems to be uh, doing pretty well. Um, my flight in was really great. Um, it was about two hours from Minneapolis to Atlanta. And I used to play Texas Hold'em uh, probably about 10 years ago or so. And I did competitive Texas Hold'em on the screen in front of me on an airplane. And I beat the computer. So that was encouraging as I came here. Um, one thing I yes, beat me out. You're no match for me, computer. Um, one thing I did, I thought was really, really interesting to be here in Greenville about 10 years ago. Again, I um, first came across uh, a Bible track in the mail of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And that was in 2007, and two years later, at about 2009, I was in some communications with Bob Jones University here in Greenville. I don't know, does anybody know of Bob Jones University? Yeah. Okay. Right on. Yeah, so I was, I was planning on just going head over heels into um, the Bible and you know, wanting to be in church leadership, and I didn't really know what that looked like at the time, but I don't remember anybody ever mentioning that the Earth was a non-rotating plane with the firmament above us. So I'm blessed that uh, God had other plans for me, and he uh, was able to kind of groom me into where I am right now. And again, I just can't thank you all enough for this opportunity to be here. So um, one thing like about activism, I think that a majority of the people here know, I'm sure, that I'm sure, uh, the top three questions that you get related to Flat Earth. Can anybody give me their top three things? Yep. 
Where's the edge? That's on my list. Okay. Yeah. Why would they lie? Why would they lie? Right? That's my second one. So we're in a row. So you got to get this one, next one right to get three in a row. Pictures from NASA. Again? Why does it matter? Ships go over the curve. Ships go over the curve. See, I mean, you guys are on it. I'm looking for this one question. What's that? What are they hiding? Okay. One more. How do the seasons work? Those are those are all valid questions for sure. And if you've watched any of my videos, you will have heard those. But I missed this one. Other planets are round. Hey, there it is. If if we're if everything else is a ball, then why can't we be a ball, right? Like that's the logic. And so. <clears throat> One thing that I have started to kind of uh, develop is watching um, some of Nathan Oakley's debates. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Nathan Oakley's debates. I got a whole time. Um, I encourage you to check his stuff out here in, in the United States. It's pretty early in the morning, probably like around eight or nine in the morning. But he continually addresses the idea that why are you arguing about intersecting shadows and on the moon landing and uh, who took the video of the lunar lander, you know, leaving the moon and everything, when you can't get to the moon in the first place because it violates uh, two gas pressure systems next to each other without a solid barrier, right? I mean, let's, let's get down to, like, what the real nitty-gritty is about space travel. It's propelling yourself off of a medium that doesn't exist. There's nothing for a rocket to propel itself off of in, from our atmosphere out into the moon. So why are we even debating about the moon landing in the first place? Yeah, now, I mean, now it's within the atmosphere so that then they can have a medium to propel itself off of. But, you know, so um, one of the things that I want to address is being trolled, right? Or else having somebody who is genuinely curious about the topic of flat earth because usually it's them coming up to, to us or me um, or you obviously and they they have this this feeling about them where they have they want you to convince them of your viewpoint right when when we're the ones and I, I try to say we but I, I want to say myself because I can only speak for myself but I'm the one that has done the due diligence the last four years looking into this topic and so I understand both sides of the story. When this person who is talking to me is newly being introduced to both sides of the story for the first time, because they think that they know where they live and they think that we have some kind of information that the quote government isn't allowing us to hear. And so that's where I want to kind of address is having, having if you're going to talk out in public and um, kind of make yourself vulnerable, whether you set up a table or you're standing there with a sign like I do at the university and allowing people to come up to you and you do it on a regular basis, you might get kind of trolled. You might get those people who don't take it very seriously. And so having that discernment of how long do you want to continue this conversation with somebody who's just kind of stuck on one viewpoint where somebody who's really open to hearing this even though they might not agree with you, having an open mind about this topic is really important. And allowing them the ability to talk and ask questions and not always feel like you have to continue to talk. Um, silence is a really great opportunity to allow them to dig their own hole, which can only go eight miles if, you, if you're new to this. Um, and so, if, if you haven't seen the video that I put out a couple of days ago where I got trolled by a NASA fanboy, um, that's, that can be a really good um, example of how to kind of handle um, that type of a troll. And he's got a NASA sweater on. He's got his prop baseball glove where I don't think he could catch a baseball if his life depended on it. And he, he kept referring to, I trust the experts. Right? I defer my own responsibility on other people I've never met before, that they've done their due diligence 
so then I can trust them. And to me, that sounds like religion. To me, that sounds like putting my faith into a priest that they that they have this communication with God and only I can talk to them to have an experience with God. And I don't feel like that's how I, my, my creator put me here is to have to defer my own senses to other people to know where I live. Okay, I shouldn't need optics. I shouldn't need a P1000 or a telescope or infrared to know where I live. Okay, he, I feel like he would give me those senses and that ability to know that I live on a non-stationary plane here without having to use any second or third party equipment to find that out. Now, yes, all of that equipment is great because it totally just blows the globe out of the water, um, which is level and flat. But also, it gives us the ability to show those people, those doubting Thomases, who need to put their finger through the hole, okay, of his side and find out, okay, is this real or not? And sometimes those are the people that you gotta allow them to experience those experiments or observations themselves. Or you could also do thought experiments with people too. And if you've watched any of my videos, we can go through these thought experiments and these examples of the different people that come up to me and have these conversations. And most of them are gonna be mundane, the same thing over and over again. If we're if the planets are round, then we must be round. You know, if you know, where's the edge? And they have all of these presuppositions. Um, that are all based on what they remember as a child. Because I never said anything about an edge. And it's always great to, a, a, you know, point out what they're asking you, you know, and say, where did you get that from? I never said anything about an edge. And then they'll be like, well, it has to be an edge. Well, okay, so your concept in it of an edge means that it's a DVD floating in outer space then. You know, so start to single out like their talking points and help them understand and comprehend the different avenues of which the Earth could be a level non-rotating plane. You know, whether it goes on infinitely forever, or there's an ice shelf holding all the water in, or more shorelines. Either way, it's not a disk floating in outer space with outer space being real and the sun being 93 million miles away still. So, you know, get 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 a really good um, comprehension and discern through multiple conversations of whether a person that you're talking to is genuine or not. And what I've started to do is like, I'll go to a grocery store or I'll go to like um, my local areas where I frequent and I'll say something subtly or I'll leave something behind. But usually it's not like the cashier and then flat smack the cashier right away if I plan on going to that store over and over again. Um, sometimes like, just for me, like I wanna kind of build up something because people are still gonna be there. You know, I, I guess I just have this like sense of, you know, we're gonna wake up the next day and these people are gonna be there. So, you know, subtly drop seeds if you know where you're gonna be at a Target or every day and you see the same cashier or the same like small grocery store or something. Um, you don't have to go all head over heels and share everything about Flat Earth within that first visit or that first conversation with that person. Um, the best part about it is leaving them with wanting more. You know, how many times have I had people at the university or at the lake come by and say, hey, I remember you, what about this or what about that? You know, so like allowing them to like come back with wanting more. Because you never know what people are doing behind closed doors. So make sure, again, that you're able to discern a genuine person who's really interested and open-minded, or somebody who's already closed off, who's looked into Flat Earth for five years and denies it still, and says that there's, there's no way that the Earth can be flat, because I trust the experts. Um, <laughs> I did want to point out this kind of, um, it's interesting to me because of just my own personal spiritual walk. Um, when I first started walking with Christ back in 2007, within that year, 
I bought like a dozen Christian Mimi type bumper stickers and I put them on my car. And I drove around with those Christian bumper stickers for like six months or so. And people gave me looks, they, you know, honk their horn and um, I would go to work and be like, wow, kind of went a little overboard on those bumper stickers, huh? And I was like, well, I mean, each one of them says something different, right? And now to see people here in this commonwealth of flat earth putting bumper stickers on their car, changing their license plates, um, going out openly and with, with no regard for anything, which is great, just to share flat earth with other people. I, I just see it as just like kind of odd from my perspective, but how truth just can really envelop a person so much that it oozes out them and they have to like, they have to, they're compelled to share this information. And I'm just really encouraged by every single one of you because I know that in your own way, each individual one here shares the earth being a level non-rotating plane in their own way with the people that they're meant to talk to. So, you know, any way that you can share, whether it be through YouTube, uh, music, uh, talking to people um, at work or your friends or family or anything like that. Keep it up because it's helping. It's changing people's thoughts. And it's kind of like um, the idea of like the ether, if you will, like how my resonance is affecting all of those around me. And people can feel that. They want to be around that. They don't know why they want to be around it. But I bet you if, if you give me or you an opportunity to hang out with each individual person here, we'd be best buds at the end of the day. You know, because we have that commonality with something that other people find, it's almost like intimidating and afraid because if they deny what they have been taught previously, they have nobody else to go to then. They have themselves. And the best way that you can know more about yourself is spending time with yourself and being alone and not depending upon your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or your job or sports or video games or anything to make you feel complete. You know, Flat Earth hasn't complete, completed me. I'm still searching. You know, I, I, have, I have seen other avenues of what truth could be considered of. And uh, Brian Stavely, if you're here, I got one for you. I watched Dem... Yeah. I watched, uh, I watched Demolition Man yesterday. I don't know if you've seen Demolition Man recently. Um, but do you remember the, the product that they were selling? Um, they met in this restaurant. Do you guys remember Demolition Man? Yeah. Okay. What was it? Taco Bell, right? Okay. So it's Pizza Hut now. I'm just saying. So we're watching it last night, and I and Pizza Hut was all over the place, and you could lip read them saying Taco Bell, but they vocalized Pizza Hut. I thought it was really weird why they would change the branding for that, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they're into Flat Earth, I guess. Um, yeah, so but like, um, you know, with like ideas like Mandela, um, you know, Black Ooze, um, uh, you know, Programmable Matter, and all these other things, these fringe topics that started coming up from Flat Earth um, during that time, you know, three or four years ago, I still continually got led back to Flat Earth. You know, so I picked up these different ideas on my way, but I feel like I'm not supposed to be left stagnant. I have to keep moving. You know, hey, great, that's a cool information. Like, that's a really good observation that you made. That's really interesting. Let me think about that. But then it goes back to Flat Earth. It goes back to creation. It goes back to us, like I titled in my last video, the creation has a right to know about creation. We as human beings have a right to know where we live, for sure, 100%. And we are on that path right now to make this place decide whether it still wants us around or if it wants that around, that, that other idea around. 
Okay, so we have to continue to make sure that we press in and with um, you know dedication share what you know. And if you don't know, then you don't know, and then you just move on, right? One thing that I do when I speak to people is I always defer to their own willingness to look. You know, like don't don't make it like this has to be done tonight, or you're or you're going to help. Uh, this is something that has to be taken in very gradually for a lot of the, a lot of people out there, a lot of the public, because their education is set on the Earth being a ball floating on the moon in space time. Like a lot of their ideas and their conceptions of how they go about their business all have a foundation that they don't even know until you talk about it that's built on a ball Earth tilted at 23.4 degrees of which nobody's ever seen before. And if you think about that, the only time you ever see the Earth tilted at 23.4 degrees is when they're talking about the seasons. Other than that, you will never see an animation or an image of the Earth tilted. It's always straight up at 90 degrees. But the only time that they'll ever mention the tilt is for seasons. Uh, just, you know, something to think about. Um, allow them to look, and, uh, you know, if they're busy, encourage them to look through their busy time. You know, because we, we me, anyways, I, I feel, uh, when I'm bored, I feel like, I can't focus on, on what I need to do, you know? So like boredom is a big thing that can affect a lot of people. So um, try to encourage them to look at it, even just like offhandedly, you know, like a snide remark or whatever. Um, one thing that I have encouraged people to do, and I even made it in one of my video titles, is when you YouTube or Google Flat Earth, change the filter to today, this week, in your view count. So does that make sense? So when you type in YouTube, when you're on YouTube, type in flat earth, okay, hit return, and then you're gonna get your three or four pages of just garbage. But change your filter to today, and then you're gonna have all your new in flat earth information from that day in the last 24 hours. So you're gonna get new content. Same thing if you change the filter to this week. That whole last week, you're gonna get all new content. Yeah, sure, you're gonna have your trolley type videos or whatever, but you're actually, one thing that is really fun to watch is this idea that I have a YouTube channel, I have to talk about Flat Earth, and you'll listen to somebody's opinion for 10 minutes about Flat Earth, and they have like 10 or 20 subs. You know, so like, listen to what other people think and why they think that way. And the majority of these people, why they think Flat Earth is a certain way is because of mainstream media. So that means that we here in this room are doing our due diligence to get out there and help correct the misinformation that's out there. Because if there's misinformation about out there, about you or me personally, I would hope that somebody would say something and say, wait a second, you got that all wrong. This is what I've heard because I've heard that from this person himself. So I heard it from that person and that's misinformation. So it's a great opportunity to be able to correct people, especially when you get to that whole where's the edge thing. Um, one thing I, uh, I, I do, I consciously think about this all the time, not only with the weather, um, obviously to be indoors, it's kind of like sketchy ground because people can play the, this is private property um, clause, and if you really want to fight it, you don't really have a dog in the fight with the whole private property um, type of thing, but you can play politics and leave like a sporting event, or you know, when I go to the Vikings game inside the stadiums, they could technically kick me out, but if I want to fight for it, I could. But the venues that I have flourished at, because I have a great cast of people, of the public coming up to me is the park and universities. And I hear a lot of really positive feedback regarding the lake interactions, setting up the table kind of like this and just having, you know, interactions with the public and, and more of a teaching aspect of it. It's definitely more low key. Probably a lot of you out there would find that pretty enjoyable. I mean, it's 85 degrees out and sunny. 
set up a table by the lake, have some water available, and hang out for a couple of hours. What would you have been doing otherwise? Right? If you go to the lake, would you not just sit around at the lake? You know, so why not make it two or three hours on a weekend when you have time? Because I understand people have jobs and family and other life goals that they want to keep. And for some, like myself, Flat Earth is just like, I got nothing to lose. Like, I literally have nothing else to lose. So I might as well just commit myself to this. And with the university conversations, it's really whether you are a you know, believer in the Bible or not, it does have stories. And there's a man in the New Testament called Jesus, and he goes to where these people are being taught these doctrines and these laws. So how is that any different than going to a university? You know, go to the university, have bold confidence to talk to these students. Because again, like I had talked about at the beginning, when I was playing Texas Hold'em, I believed no matter what, I held pocket aces or a 7-2 offsuit. I had a winning hand every single time, right? And sometimes you don't, sometimes you do, sometimes you fold and you wait for the flop and then it's like, oh, I could have had a straight, right? But you have the winning hand every single time you talk about flat earth. Every single time. And if all you got to defer to is water lane level and flat lane contained, then do it. You know, you set up a spirit level here and you set up a spirit level for a mile. From point A to point B, it's going to be level and flat and even. And that's it. That's all we have to hang our hat on. And we can go on all these other tangents about seeing too far or whatever, but water is it. We have a winning hand every single time. So if anything, I encourage you to, to just make yourself vulnerable once a month on a weekend. Get two or three people together or, you know, by yourself if you're up to it. But two or three people together, set up a table at a lake or go to a university. Um, even just this last Friday, I took, um, you know, these cards that I have. Um, thank um, Dave Gessner from Flat Earth 101. He sent me these. And just this last Friday, I didn't even talk to anybody. All I did was went around the University of Minnesota and just spam these everywhere. Put them on bulletin boards, put them on cafeteria tables, you know, just canvas the whole area for like 90 minutes and just share um, flat earth propaganda, right? And you don't have to talk to anybody. I mean, anybody can do that, right? And just drop things off. So just some different ways that you can go out and be active. Because if your intent is to go out there and honestly share this news, then there, it's not going to return void. Yeah, you're not going to know whether they looked into it or not or anything like that, but that's not the point. You're responsible for the knowledge that you have right now. And if you hold that, you bury it in the ground in the back of your house, then what do you have? You have all this wisdom and you, and you don't share it with anybody. And so I, I feel like that helps and allows people to have more compassion and um, the idea of, I have this information, I want you to be where I'm at. I don't want to have this like level where I'm more spiritually in tune with God than you just because I know the earth is flat. Don't we all want to be on that same level plane? No we'll worry about all the stuff that we disagree with later. But as human beings, I feel it's our God-given right to know where we live. And if people are withholding that from us, then we need to start our own little science um, club and go do our own experiments. And anybody who wants to join in, they come over. And then sooner or later, you know, homeschooling and taking our children out of these public schools within, you know, the next couple of years, you know, I hope, <laughs> um, is, is a huge win. Turning our, our income into a one income family is huge right now. This country runs on a two income family right now, sometimes three. Sometimes the husband's working two jobs and the wife is working one and they send their child off to public school. You know, and they're not even spending any time with their children because they're working so much. So that, that would be the best way in the future, like for me, um, to kind of like go from activism to some of my things that I feel like um, would help um, kind of uh, allow this thought to permeate more so um, because a lot of people do want to know, well, why would they lie? Why would they lie? And that's great, but we need to get to the foundation of they're lying. 
they're, lot, they're, they're being dishonest with us. They're misleading people. And even if teachers don't know the earth is flat and they believe the earth is a ball, they're being misled themselves because they're not investigating their own claims and what they're teaching in school. Um, I do um, comprehend the overwhelming feeling that you want to see results. I get it. We are. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see this whole entire place full with flat earthers. But then what do we do, right? Like, then what if, where do we go from there? What if we're just the front lines of this to help the future generations to know that we're not gonna, we're not gonna just roll over anymore and allow this to continually perpetuate and now I'm forced to live in this reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, now I have to be forced to live in their reality that they created and I don't wanna live in this anymore. So, I guess my point is, is that we're going to have to comprehend that a lot of us here in this room might not see the whole flat earth thing come to fruition. You know, and how many times has this idea of flat earth and globe earth been a conversation over the last couple hundred years? I mean, really, as humanity, how many times are we going to argue about the observations of ships disappearing over the horizon, right? I mean, it's just, it, it, it's such a interesting, uh, if you think about it in math, I mean, it's such an interesting way to perceive it, where they created this idea through math that, that oh, that's exactly where the curvature of the earth starts, but then that's where our limitations of our eyes are. You know, so they've had a lot of time to work on this. So is this their last push with the globe earth? Or are we a new resurgence that's always been and we just have to keep pressing in even more to make sure that this doesn't go away and that this is the last time that we ever have to talk about globe earth versus flat earth. I mean, really, this has to be the last time. This generation growing up right now, people who were born 2000 up until now, they are all going to hear about these group of people who are flat earthers. They will hear about it. And they will have to decide whether or not they want to continue that or believe authority and trust the experts. Um, I'm kind of like uh, in this like progressive thought um, type of thing right now where I've been in the game with Flat Earth for about four years or so. And so my thought has progressed further than what a lot of people who are just now getting into Flat Earth right now, which is great because you're you're brand new. I mean, you're open to all these new topics. Um, but one thing I want to um, help to try to instill in you is stop being afraid to fail. You know, stop being afraid to put yourself out there and be vulnerable and uh, be afraid of your own success. And be the movie star in your own life. And all everybody else is a cast of characters. I'm a cast of character in your life as much as you are in mind. But as we continue to move forward, we're all going to meet that same ending point. And that's where this place decides whether it wants truth or it doesn't anymore. And uh, trying to have like some responsibility to our creator in our own time when we're alone, uh, ask him, pray, um, find out what your role is here um, not just in this commonwealth of flat earth, but also as a, a whole in the collective consciousness of human beings and how we communicate with each other. Um, lowering your anger, building up a lot of patience. Um, that's the biggest compliment that I get uh, is my patience with people and really just allowing them to just speak freely. I mean, that's, that's what it is. I mean, people say, oh, you're such a great listener. It's like, I didn't say anything. <laughs> you know, like, you're such a great conversationalist. Well, you did most of the talking, you know? So if you allow um, people who are new to flat earth or open-minded to it, globe agnostic, globe denialist or whatever, allow them to just continue to speak. Hear what they have to say because you'll be surprised you can learn a lot from new people coming into this because they have a different kind of perspective. Um, one thing I 
I think a lot about is like exploration and what are we going to do about the possibility of more continents that are out there that are being withheld from us, more land, more opportunities. Uh, I wonder if this, you know, it's a mainstream idea, but you can follow me here. The idea of like Christopher Columbus and getting everybody all jazzed up to go to another continent or, you know, whatever that was all about. There was a time that's, you know, described in our history that shows that they left this land and all of a sudden arrived at, quote, new land, right? Discovered land. Well, what does that look like for us in the next 20 years? You know, this whole idea of flat earth has only been around for five years mainstream right now. Um, and obviously other people would uh, attest to it being out longer. Um, but let's just even take it for what it's worth five years. You know, what kind of observations, exploration, proofs is, are we going to be able to get, I speak as a flat earther, that would prove anything to any scientist or global believer when they're already in some kind of a, a sect themselves, if you will. They all have this idea that everything on Earth has already been mapped out, it's all been discovered, and there's nothing else to discover anymore. And I don't agree with that, personally. <clears throat> I feel like there is more land, or they're withholding more land from us, and it probably goes into what some of what uh, Rob Skiba is going to talk about later is this idea of another civilization, you know, and priming us for something that's going to happen in the future. And whatever that looks like, I mean, I don't know. Um, but it is something that needs to be at least talked about and put on the table. If there are ancient civilizations, why are we the ones that are being groomed? You know, what makes us so special like why do these people need to be worshipped you know what is it about them that makes them feel superior to myself for example you know right exactly um where do we go where do we go who wants to go to the north pole okay antarctica Antarctica, okay. I'm dead set on going to the North Pole. Yeah. I want to see Satan Claus and his guard and uh, the alleged um, Tower of Babel, you know, or some giant tree that's up in the North Pole or whatever. Um, but regardless of all the different stories of Mount Meru and Antarctica, ice wall and stuff like that. We need to, I, I feel like it would be in our best interest to put our monies together. Because this takes money. I mean, let's be real here. It costs money to get here, right? And to spend time with everybody. So as much as people might want to, you know, withhold their earnings from other flat earthers or other people who are creating content or whatever, use your monies to then say, okay, if there is a, an expedition, if you will, to Antarctica or the North Pole, how much is it going to cost? And I kind of looked into it and I really think it might be like a billion dollars to do something like that. By mainstream, if you want to be taken seriously, um, we're going to have to spend a lot of money to get, uh, in, you know, to get what we feel we need to share with the rest of the general public. Um, so I'm going to share this, uh, this quote here. And I've been looking into this, um, this guy, John Taylor Gatto, dumbing us down. He talks a lot about schooling. And he leaves us with this quote, whatever an education is, it should make you a unique individual, not a conformist. It should furnish you with an original spirit with which to tackle the big challenges. It should allow you to find values which will be your roadmap through life. It should make you spiritually rich, a person who loves whatever you are doing, wherever you are, whomever you are with. And it should teach you what is important, how to live, and how to die. 
How many people feel the public education system does any of those right now? Right? So I just leave you with that. Be yourself when you go out into this grand new yonder <laughs> uh, called Earth and share what you know. Don't, don't hide it away. Don't bury it in the sand. You have talents that you need to share with everybody else. Thanks a lot, everybody, for the opportunity. Yeah. Um, if you don't know me, I'm the five second ending of the Logan Paul movie. I'm just Jack, and uh, me and Karen and Andrew would like to thank you for coming out. We're uh, getting ready to break for dinner. I know none of you are hungry, but we're going to get rid of you anyway. So, um, as soon as we dismiss, you know, please leave in an orderly fashion, only knocking over people larger than you. And uh, we'll be returning in about an hour.